What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to the first video for the Holly Sniper install series. We are getting ready to pick a location for the O2 sensor in the exhaust on this 1984 RX7 we have behind me. I've got uh, two mild steel O2 sensor bungs. Pretty sure this racing bead exhaust is also just mild steel. We're going to take our O2 sensor with us under the car and see what we're working on. The other thing we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be drilling and tapping the back of the water pump housing in order to install the coolant sensor for the Holly Sniper EFI conversion. If you haven't watched the original video or the initial video for this series where I went through everything we're doing on the car, this is one of those super detailed videos I'm going to show you most, if not all, of the fabrication and thought process behind this. So, slide under the car. You're going to see right here, 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 header, collector, not really, but header, header flange, mid pipe with resonators. Okay, and you can see that it's dual all the way until it goes over the axle back there. So, the best place that I found that I want to put the O2 sensors is right here. As you can see, maybe, maybe not if I pan you around. But there is a pretty good gap up above this area, kind of where my hand's at right now. And you'll see once I lay this O2 sensor up here, that we have plenty of room to fit this O2 sensor. If I stick one of them at an angle, like this, coming out the top. So I don't know how you guys, if you can see that very well, um, whenever I pull this mid pipe out, I will show you guys exactly where I'm thinking um, outside the car as well. So this is going to go here, and then I'm also going to put a bung in this other pipe as well, about in the same location. Now, the reason I'm going to put both of them on is because it most likely won't be in this video, but in the first driving videos of the Holly Sniper EFI on this car. I'm going to compare the EFI readings from the, or the EFI readings, the AFR readings from the front rotor to the rear rotor. The rear rotor will be read or read from the Holly Sniper EFI. The front rotor will be read from my Innovate LM2 handheld wideband O2 sensor. And the reason that I'm doing that is because this exhaust is separate all the way to the back. There's no good place to collect it. So the rear rotor is generally hotter. We're going to choose the rear rotor to run the Sniper EFI's self-learn tuning software off of. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this mid pipe out and get it up on the table. First, I'm going to go like draw some marks on it so I know whereabouts I want that stuff. And then uh, I'm going to pull this mid pipe out, get it up here on the workbench, and show you guys the process of drilling the hole and welding in the O2 sensor bungs. I will also show you guys in this video um a similar install but not quite what i'm going to do i will show you guys how to use the clamp on o2 sensor bung um i'm not too keen on this but this is what holly has provided in their kit for i think it's like two and a half inch to three inch or something it's got its own size requ requirements whatever these clamps fit on which i'm pretty sure are two and a half inch clamps so that is next. Let me get this out. We'll bring you right over here to the bench. Now that we have the mid pipe off of the car, you can see I've made some marks on this end. That is the front where we were looking. This is how it would normally sit on the car, assuming the car is level. Um, I marked a line where I'd want the O2 sensor this way, and then I marked a vertical line that I could see from the bottom. Once I got it under the out from under the car, I went ahead and intersected those two marks. You can see on this one where I had initially marked it based on just the angle of the Sharpie that my Sharpie was much more this way, vertical, or my Sharpie was more vertical and the line was not at the right spot on the pipe because you want the O2 sensor perpendicular as it comes into the pipe. So the next steps here are going to be to drill your pilot hole so that you can drill a bigger hole for the O2 sensor to stick through. Now, if you are using a bung like this, you're gonna see that there is a collar or a raised 
and lowered little ledge there, the smaller the wedge. The smaller the wedge is what goes down into your exhaust pipe and then you weld around the perimeter of that. I've calipered off that smaller edge to be a 7 8 hole. My step bit only goes up to 7 8 and this thing's pretty dull. So the way you can get around or I'm going to get around to doing that is I'm just simply going to use my die grinder with a little carbide bit on it. Once I get, I'll probably step it up to like a 5 16 so I can fit that in there and then make a circle that this bung fits in. So this bung will sit right here and then the O2 sensor will protrude out of that. Same on this hole. Now, the Holly way of doing things in their video, how they show it, um, which if you haven't watched, that's that Holly Sniper install video that Holly has posted. Essentially, what they're going to tell you to do is to take this thing, put it on here loosely. Once you have it on here loosely, mark the spot that you need to drill. Then, slide this out of the way, drill your hole, which they don't require you to drill any sort of collared edge, just as long as you can drill it big enough, such that the end of the O2 sensor, which is here, the threads and the sensor portion of this, basically you just need that sensor portion of it to fit through that, and then that'll hang into the exhaust system. Now, like I mentioned earlier under the car, <coughs> when this sits in here, like so, and you get condensation in your exhaust, which you can see, there's some in this, the condensation will drip off the end of the sensor, thus prolonging the life of your sensor. Now, if you mount it like this, you're going to see condensation settle in here. This O sensor is going to short out. So you definitely want to keep it up, at least if you are going to go pretty much horizontal. You know, go just a little bit up if you can. Um, for our situation, this one is going to sit about here. And then this one is going to sit just about vertical. I may go ahead and move this one just a little bit further back and what that's going to do is keep these two from hitting each other um I may just kind of go one on this side of the center mark and one on this side of the center mark i don't think i'll get close you can see where this one is at now if i had another o2 sensor i could put it in there but that one the wiring you know they're going to be pretty close but i'd rather have them be almost equivalent distance away from the engine. I believe I've read somewhere, and, and I don't have my source for this, so um, it could be anything, that you want to keep your O2 sensor at least 18 inches from the back of a turbo. Um, and this is for sure the distance here from the header, which is there. You can see kind of about where it goes. Is more than 18 inches from the engine so rotaries do run hot this is simply a 12a stock port not too worried about it burning up the o2 sensors but we are as just about as far away as we can get without getting into the resonators and i wouldn't want to put an o2 sensor after the exhaust or at least where one of them has seen a muffler and the other side hasn't so i think for our situation this is the best spot to go with so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to drill these holes get this stuff welded in and uh, and this thing will be ready to put back in the car and then we'll start on the uh, coolant temperature sensor alright so here's the finished product fits nice and snug in there I'm gonna go ahead and walk you guys through uh, the step-by-step -step process you guys are just gonna see me do everything here in the next little bit we're going to drill a pilot. Well, first we're going to mark it with your whole center punch because it's really hard to drill on a circle. We're going to mark it with the punch. We're going to drill a 3 16 pilot hole. Then we're going to drill a 3 8 big hole. And then we're going to smooth the thing out with the die grinder. And then this guy will fit in here just like that, except it'll be right here.
Looks like they'll fit. Pretty stoked. Just wanted to check it with both O2 sensors. Uh, we'll blow the exhaust pipe out. I prepped the perimeter of the hole to weld. And uh, we'll bust the welder out here. Tack these in. Make sure that uh, we're all good to go. Alright, so I'm not done, but I'm going to put the O2 sensors in. Make sure it fits on the car first before I burn these in. Because once I burn them in, they're real hard to get off. Quick break from the um, water temp sensor. I wanted to show you guys where the O2 sensor placement was. You can see here, plenty of clearance around everything for both of them to sit right in there. Um, I angled the rotor 2 O2 sensor, which is this one. Um, that's the one that's gonna stay on the car. The one with the uh, rubber little heat shield thing clamped onto it um, is mine, and that's rotor 1. So, the wiring for those two, one of them in your guys' case, basically I just ran them up here and looped them over this heater line for now. Once I get the sniper situated, all that stuff will get zip tied up. This car has the factory heat shielding down here, so the O2 sensor wiring will reside above the heat shielding. So, the next thing, which I did this already off camera so I can show it to you guys perfectly, but I figured I'd show you the finished product first. This is the new threaded hole for the temperature sensor. Now, come to find out after taking this apart, which I was... I kind of thought that this was done like this, but I didn't know until I got it apart. It scare me. In here, which it's probably going to be hard for you guys to see it. Let me grab the light. Okay. Right down in here, you guys can see there's a raised edge. I'll, I'm going to hold still. I'll put some text on the screen. So you can see the raised um, little like embossing in there. That area is where I've drilled for this. You don't even see the light coming out of it now. Um, you can see the other O2 sensor there, which I marked on the screen, and then the new one. It's big embossing. On a GSLSE, they recirculate coolant right here through the intake manifold into what's called the thermo wax, which is kind of like a, a choke style system for EFI, basically. Um, and right there, that's where the nipple comes out for that coolant feed, and that's why I wanted to put the coolant temperature sensor right there. Um, I knew that that area would be clear on the inside, and it would also clear on the outside. So the sensor will sit right here where this hose is coming off, and I'm going to pull this car apart now since we're, see, i got my four wheeler done, so everything's out of here. The exhaust is all buttoned up underneath, so I can sit this thing on the ground, reposition it a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to drain the coolant. We're going to pull the carburetor stuff off, which you'll see in another video. And I'll show you guys the exact process of drilling and tapping the hole in the back of the uh, um, water pump housing. Um, I'm going to take the water pump and stuff out of it, put new gaskets and stuff back on it, and put it back together. Um, just so we don't get any sort of contaminants or metal shavings or anything in there. And actually, as a matter of fact, you could probably do this and hold it upside down. Um, so... Since you're going to be drilling right here where that hole is, you could mount the water pump housing in your vise or something like this. And then when you drill this, you only need to remove the thermostat and the thermostat housing. So maybe I'm going to do it like that. And then you shouldn't because this passage right here, actually it won't really matter. This passage goes to the water pump. This passage goes into the engine. So... Um, if, as long as you tip it like this, there should be no chance that any sort of metal shavings can get into the water pump and then just blow this out really well now that I think about it. So this hole goes to the water pump there, which then pushes water out the bottom of your water pump housing. The hole on your screen on the right goes past the coolant temp sensor, which goes to the thermostat. Oh, I guess there is a little access hole in between there. See that? Okay, well I guess if I tip this upside down and put a piece of tape or a little plug in that hole, I'll feel comfortable about leaving the water pump on. We'll see when we get to that section of the video here in about 0.6 seconds. So, 
this part of the video is going to be a little bit different for some people than it is for me, okay? Now, on this car, the air pump was already deleted, okay? And the BAC valve, which goes on your intake manifold down here, is already deleted, which I will show you that in the video where I'm installing the sniper onto the engine, okay? So look for that video coming up. These videos should be coming out bang, 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 right after each other, right after another. So, the air pump's already deleted, so I don't have to take the bracket off that holds the air pump to the water pump housing, okay? Removing your alternator is the same on pretty much all the cars. This one has a FD alternator. It has a different style alternator bracket. I believe this is a Bonsai Racing bracket. So, instead of you having to crank the alternator up with a, uh, sorry, my fan's blowing right here. It's hot. So instead of you having to pry the alternator up to tighten the belt and then tighten this down all at once, this alternator bracket utilizes a, uh, a bolt tensioner style where this bolt pulls this up, much like an FDRX70. If you've ever worked on one, they have a bracket just like this. Now, the water pump housing is not held on by every single one of these bolts all the way around here, okay? If your car is factory configured, which I don't know that you guys are really able to see much down here, but... Right there, if your car is factory configured, you're gonna have studs that come out of the front cover, which I'll show you on this engine. So right here, these nuts are the ones you remove, okay? This, 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 and I think there's one down here. So what you're gonna have to do, most likely, is take this pulley off. You may have to take the AC part of this pulley off. You don't need to take the main pulley off, just the AC part of the pulley, if you have that on your car. And then you can take this whole housing off as one unit. You don't need to take out all these small little 12s. Now, on some of them I have seen, these studs get broken and people put long bolts in there. So it might be easier for you guys to reference. Let me just show you a front iron. Okay. So this is a front iron. Not that one. That's an FD one. This is a front iron. Okay. And you can see these four studs are what is holding that uh, water pump to the engine okay so that's what you're looking at, at taking off when you need to remove that housing um, some of the later model cars can be different like I said I've seen big long bolts in for some of them if they get broken so just keep that in mind take them off one at a time you know that there's these main four if something else feels weird do that I've also seen on some of them which you can see here on this FD iron see this extra bolt hole right here on the side some of them may have a long bolt in that hole but most of your 12a stuff probably won't i say most probably it it shouldn't have that one unless it's got different iron stuff going on so you do and will need to remove your clutch fan the fan shroud and you don't need to remove the radiator you should be able to slide this off without taking the radiator out of the car i would highly suggest putting a piece of carburetor carb carburetor cardboard in front of the radiator something there so when you're yanking on that water pump housing and undoubtedly when it slides off really fast you don't puncture your radiator so keep that in mind while you're taking this stuff off the hoses are fairly simple if you get your car up high enough you can drain most of it into a bucket um, or on the floor as in my case because well it's hard to not make a mess and I didn't really want to take the the uh, lower shroud thing off so um, that is that. When we get to removing the carburetor video, you'll be able to see um, some of the air pump stuff a little bit better if you're here for that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. I've got most of these off. I think I should be able to slide it off. i got to take one or, one or two more nuts off. That thing will slide out. We'll drill it. And then uh, I'm going to wait to reinstall it until we get back in the other video. But the reinstall process is the exact same as what we're doing to take it apart. Just put it all back on. Be good to go. So pretty stoked for that the wiring for that sensor I will show you where that comes from in the wiring video for the sniper so yeah you might have to go watch other videos to, 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 to really figure it out but it should be good All right guys, so right here in this little recess on the back of your water pump housing, we have this one off the car as you saw. You can take, so I found a socket that fits into that recess and matches the radius, okay? So it matches the radius of this, fits nicely in here. What this is gonna do is give you a center 
a guide for your punch to go down in so that when you, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of wiggle room. Obviously, try to be as straight as you can, um, but this will get you real close. Put your punch in there, pop that with a hammer, and then you've got your... Just like that, and you probably won't be able to see it, but now we've got our center mark in here to where we can drill that hole. We can now tap that spot and do that. So I'm going to put this in the vise, and I'll, get, I'll show you guys how I drill and tap stuff. So we're over here at the vise. You can see we've got this situated so that all of the metal shavings are going to fall down into the main thermostat housing, which will then fall out of the whole pump housing thus not putting any metal into the water pump at all, okay? So, you need to first get your drill bit for your tap for a 3 8 MPT. This is a 37 64 You can buy a kit online that comes with the drill bit and the tap together, brand new. Do that. I think it's like 10 or 15, maybe 30 bucks. Um, not too crazy. So get that drill bit. I would not suggest drilling straight ahead with the big one. Go ahead, I'm gonna start with the 3 16 which is the pilot hole for my 3 8 and then once I do the 3 8 we'll drill the 37 64 So it's as simple as that, now we have our hole. I'm going to take my air compressor and blow this all out, get it all nice and clean in there. Then we're going to grab the 3 8 NPT tap from here. Um, I don't have a tap holder that goes up to a half inch like this because this is big. So you can use a 12 point socket as 12 is divisible by 4 so you can stick a 4 sided thing into a 12 point socket. Um, and I'm just going to use that to tap this. 3 8 NPT is a tapered drop the tap is a tapered thread pitch um, so it's very easy to get 3 8 MPT started right and just keep on going the tap will run in pretty far but the sensor itself will not sit flush in a 3 8 MPT unless you really run the tap through it um, once we've got the hole tapped and your tap removed, you take your sensor, start threading that guy in, and it's going to get tight pretty quick. These don't need to be cranked in here, they have a sealer on them, um, and that pipe thread will seal it up, so it is brass into steel, so you're going to mess the brass up before you mess the steel up, so don't mess up your sensor. Get it good and snug, but not super tight. All right, now the sensor's installed. You can see it right there. Let me get this out of the vise. I'll show you what it looks like from the inside. All right, and here is the finished coolant temp sensor install. As you can see, we are pretty close to hitting that embossing perfectly centered, but uh, fortunately there's plenty of material in this cast water pump housing um, that even though we drilled somewhat through the side of it, we're still good. There's plenty of room around the sensor for it to fit down in that spot. And uh, that should tuck in nicely right here above this um, front water pump mount. So I'm going to go ahead and start removing the carburetor and stuff. That's going to conclude this video, which is the O2 sensors and the coolant temp sensor. And uh, I'm going to move straight into removing the carburetor, intake manifold, and all that. So go check out that video. If you like, stuff on the channel if you're here for the sniper stuff we do a ton of other rotary things do a ton of other car things building all sorts of stuff we'd love to grow this place a little bit bigger so if you guys would love to stick around hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one keep it rad so i'm going to interrupt you right now real quick on this video because i forgot to mention this and it's not a holly sniper thing but it's a water pump housing thing okay on your water pump housing on all the rotary cars or at least the majority of them the surface of the front of the iron is flat, okay, i.e. 
the level that this hole or that this surface, the mounting surface is machined to, to this mounting surface is machined to, is the same, right? The back of your water pump housing is also flat, okay? If you're picking up what I'm putting down, once you add that gasket in there and you tighten down these two bolts right here, you're gonna tweak the water pump over because it's gonna be able to clamp it tighter here than it does over here because it's gonna pivot on this because there's a gasket in the way, right? Now, if you're the only one who's ever taken your car apart and you've taken it apart the very first time, you will find that there are two super thin, paper thin washers, which I can't find them before I get to, oh, here we go. Like, I'm talking thin, okay? So this little, that's the washer you're looking for. This is a regular washer. You can get around it by A, putting the washers back on, B, take some gasket material, put it on each stud on the other side so you're clamping into that gasket material, or C, just do what I generally do, tighten down the gasket side first, make sure that side's all super snug, and then just barely snug the other two nuts. It's not gonna come apart, just you don't wanna crank it tight because that will tweak it over and it'll